Hello everyone. So this is GS Mains Paper Two, December 2017, Part Three. Fine. So let's start. So we have done up until nine topics. So the tenth topic is case for a relook at EVMs, right? Okay. Now this will come under topic five legislature and seven RPA representation of equal sand. Now there are three different views regarding this particular case. Whether we need to go back to paper ballet or not. Or whether EVM is the way forward. So the first view will say that yes, we need to go back to paper values to restore confidence. Second view will say that EVM has brought many fold changes in the life of weaker section, especially weaker section. And then third view will take somewhat in between. But even that third view will say that EVM is not yet full proof, right? There are certain aspects which we need to keep a close tab on. Fine. So let's start. So let's talk about the first view. So first view is saying that in order to restore public confidence, we need to go back to paper values and The thing is, there are certain apprehensions. What are those apprehensions regarding EVMs? That it is possible to replace the chip, right? If we have access to EVMs, right? World over, countries are moving to paper values, right? And this is also a reason, right? Even some European countries where it started originally, right? So even some European countries have acknowledged that EVMs have failed. So countries there started with EVMs and now they are going back to paper values. So maybe we can take a hint from what is happening there, right? So again. When can this particular? And see, the thing is, this is not a we people at we who are talking about it. Very putting said, knowledgeable authors and scholars are talking about this, right? So it's it's full proof. It, it the thing is, <clears throat> whether it can be tampered or not, we don't know yet. We don't know fully yet, right? So 50-50 or 60-40 scenario is there, right? So again, you need to have a holistic view. Again, when can EVM be tam tampered? If officials are complicit, and if the guards guarding the EVM machine are complicit. Then it is quite possible to replace the chips to get the desired verdict, right? So that is the whole thing. So if the people who are guarding the EVMs they are complicit and they are corrupt, then EVMs can be what is it? Can be manipulated, right? So that is the first view. So what is the first view saying that even if EVM is full proof, then also we need to go to paper ballots to restore confidence because public confidence has taken a jolt. Second view is saying that while it would be a retrograde step to roll back EVM, so they are saying that while it would be retrograde step to roll back EVMs, we must not lower our guard. So that means vigilance is required. We need, we need to be attentive regarding EVMs, right? Now second view is also saying that introduction of EVMs by constitutional amendment in 80s and 90s, it was a step in right direction as it led to significant decline in electoral fraud. Particularly in politically sensitive states such as Bihar and UP, right? So fraud decreased, electorally fraud decreased because of introduction of EVMs. And the thing is, this is not the only advantage or benefit of EVM. What it does, it means does means what? What are the other things which happen because of EVM? It led to significant increase in provision of electricity because see the thing is, EVM will not be. What do you say? People will not uh, press a button, or EVM will not happen without electricity. So, for what do you say? For working of EVM, you need an electrified village, electrified town. So, because of the working of because, but the thing is, earlier paper ballet can be done even if you do, if a village doesn't have electricity, right? So, because of EVM, electricity came to a particular province, and because of electricity, growth happened. So, there is a What is a chain of events, right? So the thing is, uh, the author is saying that EVM led to significant increase in provision of electricity, particularly in states that were more prone to electoral violence. And research has shown that, and research has shown very strong link between luminosity, that is presence of electricity, presence of light, and growth rate, suggesting EVMs contribute to development. So are you seeing how this whole thing is going? Because of EVM, electricity came. Because of electricity, luminosity came. Luminosity led to growth development. So. It's like A equals to B, B equals to C, so A is also equals to C. So that's how EVM is also contributing to development. Now the thing is, apart from this also, EVM has empowered those from weaker sections of society who were victims of political or electoral violence. Also, significant decline in incidence of re-election and winning margins have reduced dramatically. So that is the whole thing. So there are multi-fold or many-fold benefits of EVM also. Is the That is the saying of the second view. Now, what is the third view saying? The third view is saying that we must remain skeptical, a uh, skeptical, and accept the reality that EVM issue is far from settled. And they are also saying that EC, that is Election Commission, has introduced paper trail for voters to cross-check their votes, right? VVPAT, voter ver verifiable paper audit trail, right? So, but IT trained engineers, they have shown how machines can be manipulated by remote devices or by inserting pre-programmed chips, right? Or by selectively tampering with only 20% of them to secure a simple majority. So you don't need to tamper all the EVMs. Even if you secure 20%, so we have the first pass the post system, right? So that means even by tampering with 
a particular party or a particular candidate can secure a majority right so that is the whole thing so that's what we have to understand sometimes what happens na election commission or other officials they show that see this is not tamp tampered so the thing is that has to be shown for all the machines only then this will be full proof right so again this is a very very contentious issue you have to write all the pros and cons so you know what are the pros of evms evm has a multi fold benefit the crime rate has reduced uh what is electoral fraud has reduced because of evm it contributes to de uh, development right it empower weaker section so those are the benefits and what are the demerits public confidence has taken a jolt right european countries right originally started they have also gone, gone back to paper ballot right even educated people are very educated or highly qualified people like from iits they are showing that it can be done or it can be what is it evms can be manipulated right so these are the holistic view these are the all pros and cons of evm right uses of evm okay now let's talk about supreme court and rti right so supreme court always talks about transparency and everything but is supreme court itself transparent we will talk about it so this will come under topic 6 judiciary and topic 9 statutory body why statutory body because rti which particular commission deals with rti cic cic is central information commission is it it is a constitutional statutory or executive body it is a statutory body because it is guided by rti 2005 right so these things are important from political point of view now let's talk about this whole issue so what happens supreme court summarily rejects rti request and insists that applicants exclusively request information under so the thing is supreme court generally don't take uh, what is a request under rti they say if you want to file a request if you want to know something about supreme court then what you have to do you have to file a request under its administrative rule which is called supreme court rules 1996 it was framed in 1996 and it was reissued with minor changes in 2014 and what are the issues with the supreme court rules 1990 1966 so unlike rti these rules do not provide for a time frame of furnishing information and they also do not provide for an appeal mechanism and they also do not means impose any penalties for delay or wrongful refusal of information so what does it mean it means that the nub of the matter is supreme court registry wants to provide information at its absolute discretion and the and this is nothing but present disregard for rti supreme court also has to come under rti and the supreme court rules 1966 has to go or even if it, it it has to stay it will stay but supreme court should entertain request under rti right okay russia china india trilateral meet it happened in uh, delhi it was a 15 trilateral meet right and it is an attempt to overcome challenges and ties with moscow and beijing right i think this as a multipolar world uh, see the thing is today it is not a unipolar world we have multiple poles india is also one of the poles right poles means india is also a regional power right or you can say it is a global power so as a multiple uh, multipolar world order takes shape india will have to engage with multiple partners so as to limit bilateral divergences right so see the uh, cold war era has gone right at that time like if you have a strong relationship with a particular country you know you can what do you say uh, you can you, you can count on them right now this whole thing has become very fickle right sometimes china is you know, usa is saying something bad about china and then again usa does a deal with china a comprehensive kind of a deal deal every country is doing with other country right so what does it mean it means the nature of relationship or bilateral relationship is very fickle right now right so that's why we need to have multiple partners to limit bilateral divergence new new delhi's continued engagement with the tio that is china and russia suggests that india is today confident of setting its own agenda in various platforms right fine and what is the other thing just as china engage with us on one hand and with russia on another the rising india is quite capable of managing its ties with washington beijing and moscow simultaneously and it will not always be easy right because these two are giants right global giants russia and us it will not be easy or even china is becoming a global giant now it will not always be easy but in an age where the certitudes of past are fast vanishing diplomacy will have to tread a complex path what is certitude of past so that's what i told you earlier that in the past when we had a relationship with other country you can count on them but now everything is very fickle every more country is what do you say changing their relationships in a like a yeah that is what is happening right sometimes india is having good relations with iran and then us imposes certain certain conditions on iran then india has to take a back seat chabahar project what not so you can you can even interrelate all these things so because of the certitude of past is not there certitude means there was a fix like if you said something certitude of past means there was a certainty that certainty has gone in this fickle world right so that's why we need a multipolar relationship or what do you say we know we need multiple engagements 
Okay, now let's talk about Supreme Court Law Commission and hate speech, right? Very important. So what has happened? Supreme Court has asked Law Commission for recommendations to arm the Election Commission with laws to combat hate speech irrespective of whenever they are made, right? Okay, so that is what they're saying that because see the thing is Election Commission is a constitutional body but when you see the powers which has been given to Election Commission, it is pitiable, right? It's various uh, statutory body or executive body has got more power than Election Commission, right? So that is the whole thing. So Supreme Court has asked for, uh, asked Law Commission for, what do you say, for uh, suggesting some powers or some or arming election commission with certain laws to combat hate speech irrespective. It doesn't matter whether model code, code of conduct is there or not, irrespective. Whenever a political party will make a hate speech, there has to be certain provision. Now, law commission, before we talk more, what is law commission? Law commission is a statutory body, executive body, constitutional body. So remember, it is an executive body because it was established by order of government, right? First, law commission, if I'm not wrong, it was established after Charter Act of 1833. And it is an advisory body to Ministry of Law and Justice. Okay, so Supreme Court asked for asked Law Commission for this, and what did a Law Commission recommended? They recommended or they said that Criminal Law Amendment Bill 2017, suggested by Commission, that is Law Commission, it proposes to add two sections. What are those two sections? Section 153C, that is prohibiting incitement to hatred or hatred, and Section 505A, that is causing fear, alarm, or provocation of violence in certain cases in IPC and make necessary changes in CRPC, right? So that's what they have said. They have said that we can add two provisions to IPC, 153C and 505A. Now let's talk about certain provisions. See, you do, we don't need to remember each and everything, but you can always cite these two sections which has been proposed by Law Commission, right? So it adds chance to your answer, right? And again, Law Commission is which kind of body that is important from prelims point of view. Now section 153C IPC which has been proposed, the provision is imprisonment, eh, sorry, the provision is imprisonment up to two years and fine up to rupees 5000 or both. Similarly, 505A, it, the provision is imprisonment up to one year or fine of 5000 or both, right? So this is how. So we are seeing a trinity, Supreme Court Law Commission and Election Commission. So they are coming for what is it, curbing hate speech. Okay, now let's talk about some one-liners. So G5 Sahel, what is G5 Sahel? Now G5 Sahel is also called G5S. And it is an initiative pooling troops from Mauritiana, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and Chad to battle the threat of jihad, jihadist organizations operating in region. If you see this particular area, na, it will it will lie below Algeria, Libya and all those countries, these, these countries, right? And the Sahel, what is Sahel? So Sahel is a region between uh, Sahara and Sudania, Savannah. Right, Sudan, if you see South Sudan and all those things, always keep a map in front of you, right? So Sahel is a region between Sahara and Sudan and Savannah, right? And these G5, uh, G5 Sahel, are, which are the countries which are comprising G5, uh, G5 Sahel? Mauritiana or Mauritania or Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and Chad, right? Mauritania, Mali, these are big countries, Niger and Chad, these two are also big countries and Burkina Faso is a smaller country, right? So they, it has been formed to curb or to battle the threat of jihadist organization. We talk about Boko Haram, but Boko Haram is not the only jihadist organization in that region. There is AQIM, there is Muzwa, there is Al Moro Bitom. There, there are different different jihadist organizations, right? Okay. Now Nota. What is Nota? Nota we know none of the above, right? But again, it, the thing is that there has to be a provision. There is a talk going on whether Nota if something. There are lots and lots of different talks going on regarding NOTA. We'll talk about it later because, again, uh, let's talk about what is there right now in NOTA. So what has happened? Over 5.5 lakh voters, that is 1.8%, went with NOTA in Gujarat elections. So this shows that people are not very happy with the, uh, what is it, representatives which has been given by political parties. And this is the second highest uh, among states and UTs since 2015, this 1.8%, right? So in Bihar, which uh, Bihar election, where Nitish Kumar and Lalu Yadav were in, what do you say? Went for a joint coalition. So in Bihar, 2.48% went for the NOTA option, right? So that is the whole thing. NOTA determines that people are, the more number of NOTA voters, it determines that, or NOTA votes determine that people are not happy with the current political scenario. Now, Global Nutrition Report. So Global Nutrition Report is published by a lot of people, a lot of partners. WHO is one of the partner, right? Just remember, WHO is one of the partner. And it is related to SDG2, right? SDG2 is what? which is SDG2 is about hunger and food security, right? So if you want to remember Global Nutrition Report, right? Just remember it is related to SDG2, all right? Or if you want to rem remember SDG2, just remember Global Nutrition Report, right? SDG2 and Global Nutrition Report. That way you can remember that SDG2 is related to hunger and food security, right? Fine. Uh, okay. And the last one is out-of-pocket expenditure. So 
in India, the out-of-pocket expenditure makes 62% right, of healthcare cost, which is too high. And this data has been given by IRDAI, that is Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India. And these expenses are much higher than in developed countries. So we have to reduce this out-of-pocket expenditure. Whenever any health kind of questions or health-related questions come, you can always say that out-of-pocket expenditure is very high, which has been 62% set by IRDAI. And this is much, much higher than in developed countries. Fine. Okay, so we'll keep until here only. Again, lots and lots of different topics are there. We'll cover them in subsequent videos. Thank you.